So you want to create a spotlight effect in Blender 2.8 EV. Hey guys, one by Test by Kai. I'm Kai and today we are back in Blender once again taking a look at a spotlight type of effect which is super easy to pull off you probably know what I'm gonna do if you've seen a lot of my uh, EV effect videos where we do a lot of cool things with uh, settings and stuff but let's get started today I have nothing in my scene except for this lamp here um, I'm gonna select the lamp hit G to move it on over I'm actually just gonna clear the rotation and location by hitting alt G and alt R um, now we're gonna go ahead and go to the lamp settings here and uh, hit G, Z to move it on up, something like that. And I'm going to change this to a spot lamp, as you must have expected. Now, if I go to render viewport shading, you're not going to see anything because nothing's going on right now. There's nothing, you know, showing the light. It's just a solid scene. There's nothing it's shining on. Um, if I go to the world tab here and change this color to solid black, um, you still won't be able to see anything. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go to color management and turn uh, this from filmic to uh, default, by the way just because that bugs me. We're going to go ahead and uh, go back to the lamp settings here, selecting our lamp here. We're going to change the size. You can change the size up. I'm going to change the size down and the blend up a little bit. Maybe I'll turn the radius up a little bit and the power will turn to maybe 2000 just for this test here. Now, this isn't doing anything. We're on rendered and you still can't see anything. If I hide my overlays, you can't see anything going on at all. The reason for this is because we don't have any volumetrics going on. So if I add volumetrics to this scene, uh, you can see that the light will take effect. So let's go ahead and split our window into two by dragging up from the top here from the left top hand corner. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and change this to the shader editor here. And we'll just kind of give it to that panel right there because we don't need it anymore. Uh, go to object, change that to world, and we'll go ahead and hit shift A and search for volume scatter. And we'll just go ahead and place that right there and plug the volume into the volume of the world output. Now, when we do this, it's going to kind of get grayish, but the reason for this is because the density and everything is too high. Now, if I put this on a value that's somewhere around 0.1, you can see that uh, we now have a spotlight type of effect. I'm going to leave this guy right here on 0.5. Maybe we'll do point. We'll leave it on zero. We'll put them on. We'll put them on zero and leave it right there. Now, the closer we zoom into this, the brighter it gets. The further we go, the darker it gets. So, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and, and hit zero on my num one on my numpad and five on my numpad. Sorry, to go into the front-facing view and hit Shift A to add in a camera because uh, I deleted mine earlier. And we'll just turn my overlays back on. Hit G, Y to move it back. Zero to go into the camera's view. I'll just move it backwards a little bit. Now you can see that this has a really nice spotlight type of effect. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it right there. What I want to do is I want to select this. And we can change around the color. Uh, change the color of the volume scatter. But this isn't changing the color of the lamp. So keep that in mind. This is changing the color of the lamp right here. So I want to leave this volume scatter as white. Because, I mean, the, the fog is going to be white. I want to change the color of the lamp to change what it looks like. So the color of the lamp can be any different type of color here. I just hit Shift D to duplicate this spotlight. And we can have a bunch of different spotlights going on at the same time. Which looks really cool if you're going for something like that. Now, if I were to have other things in the scene, you would see that we do have some volumetrics going on. So the further away things are then the you know more foggy they are I suppose so if I have this right here we have like a Suzanne in the darkness looking super creepy like really really creepster uh, I can turn smooth shading on and then just add a, a subsurf modifier really quickly um, alright so that is uh, pretty much it for the spotlight effect it looks pretty cool I like it a lot if I rotate this if we use one single spotlight instead of having these other three uh, just get rid of those real quick uh, it's really really ambient it's really cool we can turn the size up Turn the blend up a little bit, and I'll change the color to a nice blue to make it really cool. Um, but uh, but yeah, that uh, that is a really really simple easy way of making a spotlight in uh, Blender 2.8 EV. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you can turn the also the power up to 5,000, maybe 10,000 even. Uh, now of course the the sh the the shadow is too much now, but Turn the softness of the shadow up, maybe the bias up a little bit. We gotta turn, uh, we can turn contact shadows up, and also shadows here, uh, we can turn to 5, tw uh, sorry, not 5, 12. We can turn to 10, 24, and turn soft shadow, soft shading on, and then it'll be much easier to look at. So that is it for today's tutorial. Super simple, super easy, super quick. Uh, I thought this was a really cool, easy, easy effect to get very simply 
and uh, in Blender, maybe you get some God rays in there. I don't know, maybe something like that. And by the way, you could also go ahead and really quickly, since we have a bunch of time still left, I want to go ahead and add in a plane here and uh, rotate it on the R. Actually, we won't rotate it first. Let's go ahead and go to solid viewport shading so I can see what I'm doing a bit easier. Hit S to scale it up a little bit, just a lot. Scale it up a lot, actually. Uh, and then we'll hit S to uh, tab to go in edit mode, sorry. Then right click. Hit subdivide. We'll just subdivide this a bunch of times. So just keep subdividing it over and over again. Something like that, right? And I want to go ahead and uh, hit uh, A to deselect everything. Hit C to go to brush select mode. And we'll just go ahead and just uh, grab a couple of really random. We'll just move our mouse around a lot just to get a couple of really random places like this. And we'll just keep going until I, I feel like it, there's enough of these orange spots that we've colored in here. And I'm going to go too far to the edges. Um, so we'll just go ahead and make sure it's something like this and then we will go ahead and stop about right now hit oop, uh, right click to get rid of the cursor so we can do other things then hit delete and delete vertices now you can see we have a bunch of holes in this canvas here now so if I go ahead and, and hit S to scale this back down um, and then hit R Y to rotate this I guess uh, you can probably tell where I'm going with this hit G to move it up S to scale it down and if I go back into the camera's view here and move this uh, lamp hold on shift and move this lamp and the plane up out of the scene uh, actually we can go ahead and hit uh, rendered viewport shading and you can see that if I were to show you here we have some really pretty cool uh, effects going on with this now if I were to scale it down some more maybe get it only in the light about right there you can see that we kind of have a bit of grain on our uh, on our our light. So now you can see it has it's it's pretty soft. It's pretty. Let me just get rid of Suzanne altogether. Uh, it's pretty soft. It's pretty nice. You know, there's nothing really breaking it up. But if I unhide our plane, you can see we have really nice. Um, we have a really nice kind of light shining through. Now, if I go ahead and make sure that you cannot see. This lamp by holding, see the plane, sorry, by holding down shift, selecting both of those, hitting G to move this up out of the camera frame. You can see we have some really pretty cool, like God ray type of effect things going on here. So if I if I scale this up, the uh, lines will get bigger. If I scale the plane down, the lines will get smaller. But make sure it doesn't see the edge of the plane or else you will be able to tell where it stops like that. So if I had to scale it up, the lines will get bigger and we have more god ray type thing. If I go ahead and hit shift D to duplicate this and then just kind of move it move it around maybe maybe right there you can see that we'll get even more lines I think that's a little overkill though so that's fine the way it is. If I go ahead and select the light again turn the power up to something insane like 10,000 100,000 sorry and then we use this plane uh, again just keep duplicating it until I get something that I want. You can even rotate it around if you want. Um, something like that's kind of difficult to see since we're not out there. We just got a bunch of these all over top of each other, something like that maybe. And we'll just rotate it until I have the type of light that I want, which looks about good right there. Uh, there we go. So that is how you get a spotlight effect, and then you has how you change it into a god ray type of effect uh, at the same exact time. So I can turn the, the size down, get a smaller, uh, get a smaller ray, um, turn the blend down if I don't want it to be that much that blended. But uh, but yeah, that is it for today's tutorial. Hope you boys and girls enjoyed it. We got that nice spotlight the way that it is right there. I can add Suzanne back in uh, really quickly, or maybe we'll do default cube. Hello, default cube. You're looking good today. You're looking good. There we go. And we turn that uh, all that those uh, those God rays back on. Of course, we need to bump up the shading as well, soft shadows, uh, and then we can also turn the cube size up to 4,000 if you really want to. But um, but yeah. So that is it for today's tutorial. Hope you guys and girls enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye bye.